welcome to this week's science news. Say hello to Europe's latest robot, the aptly named Eurobot. This one's been designed for space and that's where its three arms will come in handy as it romps around the outside of the International Space Station helping out the astronauts. To make sure Eurobot will function okay in microgravity, a lot of its tests have been performed in a neutral buoyancy facility, otherwise known as a giant swimming pool. Eventually, Eurobot will have a whole range of hands to be attached for different tasks, including one for when it first encounters Mars. Mars Fancy an eco-friendly funeral? Well, forget your cardboard coffin. With Sweden's new crematorium, you can use your corpse to make your own compost. First, your body will be frozen. Then it will be dipped in liquid nitrogen. That will remove all the water and your corpse will become as brittle as glass. After a few minutes in a vibrator, you'll be reduced to dust, a bit like this. Then after a quick scan with a magnet to remove your metal fillings, you can simply be scattered around the garden to fertilize the plants. Sounds like a great idea. The only problem at the moment is the Swedish authorities. They've demanded more tests because they don't believe the technology works. A while ago, US company Thinkamove devised an earpiece to detect speech from the sound waves in the ear canal. They use the technology to remotely control a robot without using their hands. Well, now they've come up with a new use for the device. Soon, quadriplegics will be able to move their wheelchairs by simply moving their tongue. Here's how it works. When you move your tongue, the air pressure in your mouth changes. The earpiece detects those changes and sends them to a computer on the wheelchair. And depending how you move your tongue, the wheelchair will move forwards, backwards, anywhere you like. Should make life a lot easier for wheelchair users. Roboticists have just built the fastest walking robot. They've called it Runbot. It's been clocked at top speeds of three leg lengths per second. That's just slower than the fastest walking human. The big deal with Runbot is that it doesn't move like other robots, which have to calculate every step they take. Instead, it walks more like a human. Most of the time when we walk, we do it automatically. Our muscles communicate with our spinal cord and our brain only gets involved if we have to do something tricky, like clamber down a slope. Well, it's much the same for Runbot. Sensors on its legs and joints communicate with its local circuits and it's only if the terrain changes dramatically that its learning circuits, its brain gets involved to help it navigate any obstacle successfully. Most of the time. Remember all the fuss around Knut? He was the first polar bear to be born at the Berlin Zoo. He was rejected by his mother and raised by keepers. Some people thought that was unnatural and that Knut should be put down. After all, he wouldn't have survived in the wild on his own. But the Germans were having none of it and Knut was a big hit at the zoo and seemed to thrive on all the attention. Well, the news this week is that Knut has been banished to a back room out of public view. Why? Well, Knut's gone and done what all babies do. He's grown up. Only this toddler's got big teeth and Knut's been deemed too dangerous to play with the keepers anymore. So how is Knut taking life out the limelight? Well, not very well. Seems he had grown addicted to human laughter and applause and now spends his time howling. That's good news, say the keepers, because once he breaks the emotional bond with humans, he's a step closer to being reunited with his own species. In fact, he's just met his dad for the first time, who tried to kill him. Tough life. Let's hope no one's told him about climate change yet. Well, that's all your science news for this week. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.